Okay. So who's going to take the case? I think Dr. Tanzil. Dr. Tanzil, are you here? Assalamu alaikum, sir. I'm here. Alaikum assalam, rahmatullah, Dr. Tanzil. Uh, How are you, sir? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm trying to be fine. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so uh, let's start without any further delay. Uh, okay. Your case is female, 36 years old, presented with a cuff. Okay, two minutes and we are going to start. Her, her name is like Mrs. Sarah? Yeah, Mrs. Sarah. Okay. Okay, just two minutes and we are going to start. It is station five. Yeah, yeah, station five, station five. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, doctor, let's start. Uh, hello, good evening, Mrs. Sara. Good evening. I'm Dr. Bukhari, and I have been asked to talk to you and examine you. Is it fine? It's fine, doctor. So may I know what brings you to the hospital? Well, doctor, uh, for the last two months, I start to feel like I have uh, this cough. Uh, it's really bothering me, doctor, and affect my quality of life, and it's really irritate the people around me. So this is why I came here today. Uh, well, I'm sorry to know this, but uh, has it happened before or is it the first time? Well, I used to have a cough before, doctor, but uh, this time it is constant, I think, for two months now. And uh, this is uh, the quality of cough is same with the previous one or you feel it is different? Well, I'm not quite sure, doctor. Right. And um, uh, any specific time of the day you have more cough, like in the morning or in the nights? Well, uh, it's, uh, there is no specific time. Sometime in the morning, sometime in the evening. And anything that makes it worse, like any exercise, cold, dust? Sometimes I feel it's getting worse with the exercise or when I move for, for a while, I feel like, the, I feel like the, the shortness of the, sorry, the cough is getting worse. And anything that makes it better? No, doctor. Do you have any phlegm with it? Yeah, doctor. Uh, what is the color of the phlegm? Well, uh, sometimes yellowish color, color sometimes it's clear, but most of the time it's, uh, uh, the color is, uh, is terrible, doctor. It's like, uh, it's like a yellowish, com uh, yellowish color. Have you ever coughed up blood? Yeah, doctor. How, how much blood and what is the color of that blood? It was clear blood, doctor. It's really That's frightened me, doctor, but uh, it was, I think, a little amount, but uh, it happened many times, doctor. 
Right. Does he have any fever? High body temperature? No, doctor. Any weight loss? No, doctor. Any rash on your body? No, doctor. Any joint pains? No. Any lumps and bumps anywhere? No. Right. Uh, Mrs. Sara, uh, are you allergic to anything? No. Right. And uh, do you have any other medical condition I should know about? Yeah, doctor. I have been diagnosed with uh, I have been diagnosed with uh, HIV uh, five years ago, and I have also had a history of uh, pulmonary tuberculosis uh, two and five years ago. And when I was and a child, I used to uh, visit the hospital many times with uh, chest infection, throat infection. But uh, I think that was resolved after I get older. Are you taking any medicine for this, uh, these problems nowadays for HIV? Yeah, I stopped the treatment, doctor. May I know why? Well, I felt like uh, I, can't, I can't continue this medicine for a long time. I felt like, uh, I don't know, but I was not very comfortable with them. Right. And, um, uh, okay, uh, are you do, using any other medicines apart from these, uh, like all the counter medicines? Sorry? Are you using any over the counter medicine? No, doctor. And uh, did you recently travel abroad? No, doctor. And did you, have you been in contact with anybody having cough, like TB? No, doctor. And uh, do you smoke? I smoke, doctor, yeah. How much cigarettes? How often? Well, about five cigarettes uh, every day. Well, Mrs. Sara, uh, may I know your vaccination status in the childhood? I am not quite sure. I can't remember that, doctor. And do you take any alcohol? Yeah, I drink alcohol. Uh, well, Mrs. Sara, the smoking can be injurious to your health. So it will be wiser if you stop smoking and we can help you in this regard. Okay. Thank you, doctor. What do you, okay, what do, you do for a living? Uh, I am a secretary, doctor. And uh, how uh, do you have any family? Yeah, I live with my husband, doctor. And is he okay or he needs any special care? No, he's okay. How is this affecting you in your daily life, the, the stuff? It's really bothering and... me, doctor. And I, I didn't go to the work for many days now because of uh, this cough is getting worse. Okay, so Mr. Sarah, now I will examine you. Is it fine? Yeah, it's okay. And too many remain, doctor. And do you have any pain anywhere? Sorry? Do you have any pain anywhere? No, doctor. So I will do a quick general physical examination starting from the hands. Look for any nicotine staining or any... There is a clubbing in the hand. Clubbing in the hand and uh, I'll check the pulse. It's then okay. Anemia, jaundice in the eyes. So it's okay. Lymph, lymph nodes in the neck. It's okay. And uh, quickly I can come from the back and uh, see, uh, aspirate the chest quickly. Okay, what do you I want? Expect, what do you I expect, expect some crepitations, crepitations, post crepitation with the changing with the cuff. Okay, some... okay, it is present. And uh, I can the right lower loop, only right lower loop. Okay, and uh, okay, so Mrs. Sarah, do you have any concerns for me? What do I have, doctor? What's wrong with me? What's happening to me, doctor? Uh, well, Mrs. Sarah, there can be uh, post few possibilities. Uh, most likely it seems that you have a condition called as bronchiectasis. Uh, I have what? Be, Sorry, doctor. Bronchiectasis. Okay. bronchiectasis. This might be uh, linked to your childhood infections or the tuberculosis which you have had in your uh, past. Uh, now we need to uh, do some tests on you on some x-ray and scan of your chest. And we need to involve the chest specialist uh, uh, to further for the further management, and uh, as I told you, it will be wiser to stop smoking at the moment because it can damage your lungs more. Okay. And meanwhile, I will give you certain antibiotics and certain other medicines to help you improve your symptoms. Okay. Is can I fine, do? Can I do anything by my own to to improve this cough, doctor? 
Uh, yes, uh, there can be few ways. Uh, okay, your, is, uh, your time is finished. Examiner question. What's your physical finding in this case? Physical finding in this case is uh, clubbing and uh, uh, and the right unilateral force repetitions. Uh, these are the physical findings. Okay, what's your what's your diagnosis and what's your differential for this case? Uh, my own most likely diagnosis is bronchial cases, uh, as the patient has history of tuberculosis and childhood infections. But I was uh, also thinking about uh, COPD and asthma and uh, bronchitis and uh, any connective tissue disorders uh, like okay. sarcoidosis. Again, again, what's your differential? Asthma, bronchi. Bron asthma, asthma, COPD. Okay and bronchite acute bronchitis okay or uh, chest infections like pneumonia anything like that okay how you are going to investigate this patient doctor we need to uh, admit this we need to uh, do certain uh, blood test and sputum culture and sensitivity then we need to do x-ray of the chest and maybe high resolution ct scan will be needed okay any other test arterial blood gases and pulmonary function test can okay Okay, how you are going to treat this patient? Uh, we need to admit this patient and we need to involve the pulmonologist. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we will... Uh, we need to admit this patient, we need to involve the pulmonologist, huh? And we need to uh, start her on antibiotics. Uh, and um, then we need to do some teach her about physiotherapy, test physiotherapy to help her uh, improve her symptoms. Okay. Nucleotics, nucleotics may be needed. Okay. Any role of surgery in this patient? Well, uh, it depends upon the investigation. But yes, if it is uh, not curable, we may do lobectomy or uh, bolectomy or something that a surgical opinion will be needed. Okay, your time is finished. Thank you, doctor. Okay, let's discuss the case together. Okay, Dr. Okay. Tenzi, let's start yes, from sir. the beginning. In the history, what do you think you missed in the history? Let me recall what you have said, okay? You ask me about the cuff, okay? You ask me about uh, if this cuff the first time or not, you compare it to my previous cuff. Uh, you didn't, you ask me if it contain a blood, which is very important question and very crucial question that, and that's a good thing that you have asked me about, uh, about it. But you didn't ask me about the other chest symptoms. You didn't ask me about the yeah. shortness of breath. You yes, didn't sir. ask me about any uh, other cardiopulmonary symptoms like chest pain, like palpitation, okay? Although you asked me about the contact with chest patient. The analysis of the cuff itself, it was good, uh, especially that you asked me about the nocturnal cuff, and you asked uh, ask me about the blood within, uh, if there's any blood with the, with, the, with the cuff, okay? Or with the sputum itself, which were a good question, a good question. Uh, you ask me if after that immediately about the skin rash, joint pain. I don't know exactly what you was looking for, but uh, maybe you was, lo you was looking for connective tissue, connective tissue disorder, which is great, an important differential for the, for, the, for the hemoptysis. And we are going to talk about that later on. Then after that, you ask me about in the past medical history. Uh, you, ask, mm -hmm. uh, you ask me about the, uh, if I have any past medical condition, I told you, yes, I have a tuberculosis and I told you I have an HIV. You didn't tell mm -hmm. me if I'm taking a treatment for the HIV or if HIV is controlled or not. And why we ask, and you, why you should ask me about that? Yes, it can be, it, it can be to AIDS, like uh, the PCP and uh, other conditions. Yeah, to any immune deficiency, any immune deficiency, yeah, whether it was, yeah, HIV itself, it can be disposed to, it can be disposed to the bronchiectasis. This patient from the history, he had a three uh, risk factor or three most probable etiologies for the, for developing the bronchiectasis. Number one, the recurrent childhood infection. Number two, the tuberculosis. And number three, the HIV. So you should ask me just if I'm taking any medication for the HIV or not. Uh, but you asked me in general, a general question, if I'm taking any yeah. medication right now, but you didn't ask me specifically if I'm taking any medication for the HIV, whether I'm following mm -hmm. with the clinic or not, because if the CD4 count and the, the CD4 count was low and the viral load was high, this patient at risk to develop bronchoiectasis, okay? 
Oh, okay, okay. Okay. You didn't ask me in the family history, I'm right? If you have any family condition of similar. No, no, I have. Yeah, yes, this is I very this is very important question. You have to ask me about. Uh, you ask about the drug history and that, and then we come to the social history. You analyze the social history very well, okay? You ask me about my job, which is very important. If anyone presented with a cough, you have to you have to ask about the job, because there are many 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 jobs that are related to the cough, and we discuss mm -hmm. the cough extensively. Maybe if we have, uh, if you have a time, we can explain. Uh, we can explain that by details, uh, maybe today, maybe later on, maybe on another session. The second okay. thing that you ask me about the smoking, which is very important question. And uh, you ask me about my, uh, also you ask me about the travel, I think, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, which is also an important question because uh, you may think that I have a uh, pulmonary embolism, a uh, cough with blood, but it is unlikely to be for two months and it is unlikely to present just with uh, uh, unlikely to omit or to ignore all the underlying risk factor to think about the pulmonary embolism although uh, you may have to ask me the other question like shortness of breath like chest pain which you totally ignore if mm. i told you if i told you they are positive you have to put in your mind that one of the differential could be a pulmonary embolism but in mm. our case in our case here uh there was no chest pain and there was no shortness of breath okay so we can but uh anyway that's that was an important question uh there is another question that you ask about them and i was very pleased that you asked me about the loss of weight loss of appetite yes yes uh, lumps and bumps those are very important question in any patient presented with a cough especially if he also a smoker and if he also has uh, a hemoptysis because we want to exclude the, the cancer. Okay? Yes. Hmm. So from the history, overall you did well. Overall you covered most of the important aspect. You just missed uh, a few points and I have already clarified for you. Okay? Okay. Sir. I think you spent a lot of time in the history. Uh, yes, this so, is why. Yeah. This is why because yes, you're right. Okay, so in the examination, uh, you forget to to check the respiratory rate, okay? Mm. Uh, you just uh, went from the clubbing to the vital signs to the yondis anemia, and you went to the scaltate the heart without uh, measuring the respiratory rate. Or you can just ask me, uh, can you show me the vital sign chart? Most probably in the exam, in the exam, in the basis exam, they are going to show you the vital sign chart from outside the station before you go in before you walk in mm -hmm. uh, they are going to print for you the vital sign chart so you can you can just look at it before you uh, before you go inside okay but you mm -hmm. have to tell the examiner i would like to uh, to check the respiratory rate or i would like to measure the respiratory because there is no time to measure the respiratory rate okay right, right, that's it right. the patient has uh, usually the examination of bronchitis is uh, aside from the clubbing, you may find cyanosis if the patient was in respiratory failure. Other feature, if they are present, usually because of the underlying uh, etiology that result that cause the bronchiectasis. Uh, but bronchiectasis per se usually it doesn't cause other 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 finding than the coarse crackles. Sometimes in some patient you may find that they have a wheeze also. In addition to the coarse crackles, you may mm. find they have a wheeze. Uh, at the uh, localized area of the bronchiectasis, you can find that they have also, in addition to the coarse crackle, they have a wheeze at the end of uh, at the end of their expiration. The character of the crackles in the patient with the bronchiectasis, it's usually a coarse crackles. Usually, mm. start with the, with the inspiration, reach the peak during the midway during the, the, the uh, during the inspiration, and it also continue after continue uh, during the expiration. Okay, uh, as you said, if the patient is cough, you can find that they, uh, uh, they become a little bit quieter, but they are not totally disappear. Okay, mm -hmm. so in the examination, you got it. That was right. You have to look for the clubbing, especially if this patient is, uh, had a cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's it. That's most important thing from the, from the examination. Because it because this patient you have to examine the chest. There is no time to look for the uh, 
uh, I don't think the time will be enough for you to examine the uh, to examine any other part of the body, but uh, you did well in the examination side. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sometimes the patient may have a fever that suggests he is on acute exacerbation, uh, or uh, just uh, the patient has currently an acute infection uh, or exacerbation of bronchi of bron uh, bronchitis. Uh, mm. But this is unlikely to appear in the exam. They are going to bring for you a stable patient who is a febrile with a pyrexia. Okay, in the let's go into the investigation. Uh, investigation. Uh, or what is the concern of the patient? He told you, uh, what do I have, doctor? Or uh, can you explain for me the bronchitis? Okay. Uh, what is bronchitis? How we can explain it again in a uh, non-jargon uh, phrases or non-jargon words? It is uh, the permanent dilatation of the uh, air channels in the lungs. Yeah, that's it. that's it. This is very simple explanation to the patient. And you have to explain for the patient the etiology, why he developed the bronchitis? There can be few possible causes. Uh, uh, sometimes childhood infections can result in this. And sometimes uh, certain infections, bug infections like TB can also result. And HIV can also result in this. Condition. Okay, okay. This is how to explain it to the patient. Okay, he asked you, can I do anything by my own to, to improve my condition? You already mentioned you already mentioned one of uh, one of the things for me that I have to stop the smoking. So you have to repeat it again for the patient that you have to stop the smoking. Any patient with chest infection, any patient with chest disease, and he is a smoker, you have to advise him about the about the smoking. The second thing you can tell him about the uh, importance need of the of the vaccination. Okay. Vaccination. Okay. If you okay. if uh, you have to tell him that if you take uh, the flow shot every year and another vaccine for uh, for the chest for the, for one of the chest organism or just uh, harmful germs uh, which is pneumonia vaccine at least one this is going to reduce the chance for you to have uh, severe symptoms or worse symptoms okay right sir uh, uh, one of the things that the patient can can do by himself is the botulinum drainage they are some sort you can explain for him that they are some sort of uh, uh, physical, some sort of posture and some sort of physical uh, position you can take to improve the uh, improve the improve your symptoms and it will and it can help you to get rid from the from the from this cuff or from this productive cuff which is the botulinum drainage. Okay? Mm. okay. Okay. Then the examiner asks you, what's your differential for this case? Mm. Uh, what's the differential? If it is bronchitis, I'm going to mention for the examiner, it could be just simple and acute infection. It could be a yeah. cancer because it contains a blood and the patient is a smoker. So I have to mention for the examiner also again, it could be a cancer. It could be, uh, it could be just a simple acute infection. And number four, you, you mentioned for me COBD. COBD unlikely if the patient doesn't have the symptoms for two, for two years, okay? Uh, remember, in chronic bronchitis, in the patient with the COBD, they should have a productive cough for three months or at least two years. Then we can say that the patient has a chronic bronchitis as a part of COBD, but you can mention it at the bottom of your list. Okay? We will mention cancer. It is very important. Yeah, yeah, I told you, you have to, you didn't mention cancer, mm. Mm, okay? Yes. Which is very important in the differential. Okay, okay. Okay? Uh, mm, in the yes. management side, uh, you did very well, and in the investigation side, you did also very well, and we are going to explain the details of the management and details of the investigation. Right. Thank you very much, sir, welcome. for giving me a chance. Welcome, welcome, Dr. Tansi. You did very well. I hope sir, you should. Uh, in this case, uh, what will be the specific differential other than bronchitis and cancer? So, regarding cancer, should I ask regarding weight loss? Yeah. No weight loss. Yeah, there is no weight loss. Number one, it could be acute infection, okay? Just a simple acute infection, uh, like pneumonia, chest infection, this is number one. It could be even tuberculosis because the patient has an HIV and he had a history before of TB, okay? And this cough is a productive cough for two months now, although he, do, he don't have a constitutional symptoms, he don't have an eye sweat, he don't have a fever, he don't have any loss of weight or loss of appetite, but uh, it could be also 
a cancer, it could be tuberculosis, it could be acute infection, and I can put number four, it could be a COPD. Okay? You have to mention all of them to the to the examiner. Okay? So COPD. Let me just be directly pneumonia. Should I ask regarding the saturation of oxygen, sir? Okay, it could be BCB. Uh, this is one of the very important differentiators for the patient with the, with, the, with the HIV. But usually, usually the patient with the BCB, they present mainly with shortness of breath and dry cough. Okay, in addition to the pleuritic chest pain. Their main presenting symptoms will not be a productive cough with hemoptysis. They will be mainly they present with a shortness of breath and dry cough. Usually the patient with the BCB, they are very tachypneic very technique they are unlikely to see them at the exam although in india before they bring a case of bcb the patient was quietly stable i think he was just a surrogate okay he was just a surrogate uh, it was not uh, a genuine case uh, but they give you a very strong history correlate with the bcb uh, so you can say bcb but from the history in this patient it is unlikely to be bcb as i told you the main presenting feature is a cough uh, Sorry, doctor, what is BCB? Sorry. Uh, uh, pneumocystis, pneumocystis, pneumocystis pneumonia. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, so the patient will have a chest pain and will have a dry cough. Okay, and he will be tachypneic, hypoxic. Uh, they are very toxic patient. Uh, you are unlikely to see them at the exam, but sometimes they, uh, they can bring them at the exam. Uh, but in a stable condition. Okay. So I have only question about the PCP. Yeah. So um, actually, um, as part of any routine uh, for any patient with immunodeficiency syndrome or HIV or these things, they, they usually the infectious disease team will rule out PCP, whatever was the presentation, even with a mild cough, they yeah. will just order it. Is it right? BCB all usually developed if the patient has a CD4 count low. This patient, before I say he has a BCB, you, currently from the symptoms, is not going with the BCB. I have to do for him some investigation before I say he had a BCB, okay? So I can't, I can't just say from the, from, the, from the history it's a BCB. Okay, but just to, to, to end the debate, uh, this patient has an HIV, and it is, uh, although the symptom is not going with the HIV, okay? Although the patient uh, symptoms is not going with the HIV, but from the history, he had, uh, uh, let's say, non-compliance to the treatment. I can mention for the examiner also BCB at the bottom of my list. Okay, I can mention. Uh, okay, I can mention for the examiner it's a BCB. Usually, you have to, you you should diagnose BCB. Uh, usually, we diagnose BCB clinically. I am working in a place where BCB is very common. Okay. Very common, we usually diagnose them clinically. And from the X-ray, you will find that this patient has a diffuse infiltrate all over the lung. Number two, the patient will be very toxic, will be tachypneic, will be hypoxic, very high respiratory rate. And the patient will have a dry cough, not a productive cough, okay? And they will have a chest pain. Examination, uh, either from the sputum, we have to do for them uh, microscopic examination, microscopy for the sputum, and already Dr. Tenzil mentioned it. Uh, you have to check the sputum under microscopy to detect that, to detect the cyst. Uh, or uh, if they are, if the patient, most of the patient, most of the patient, you can't do for them the sputum because they have a dry cough. Most of the patient. And most of the patient we required, uh, we require bronchoscopy. And because uh, BCB is very common, it's very common uh, in, in the patient with an HIV, usually we don't do for them bronchoalveolar lavage, we start the treatment for them immediately, even without doing the bronchoalveolar lavage, okay? This is just uh, uh, some headlines or points regarding BCB. Uh, from the history, it is not going with the BCB, but just to uh, put myself in the safe side, I can tell the examiner it's a BCB. Okay. Dr. Ala, please, uh, can we put hypogab uh, globulinemia in the differential? It could be, but the patient told you in the history that I, I used to have before a chest infection, but right now I am I'm quietly very well. He asked me about that and I told him no, so I'm not going to put all the causes of bronchiectasis in my list of the differential. Uh, as I said, as I told you before and I mentioned many times, 
In the exam, they don't want you to, uh, in the differential, to be like uh, someone who is reading from a textbook. Uh, I, if I ask any one of you, most of you, or I think all of you passed MRCB bar two, if I ask you about the causes of bronchiectasis, you can mention for me not less than seven or eight or even 10 causes of bronchiectasis. At the exam, I'm not going to mention to the examiner all of them, like cystic fibrosis, hypogammaglobinemia, ciliary dyskinesia, inflammatory bowel disease, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. I'm not going to mention that unless I have very strong finding suggest one of them. So uh, if I was in your place at the exam, I'm not going to mention to the examiner hypoglobin. Uh, because there is a um, here recurrent history of recurrent chest infection and HIV also. HIV can happen alone without uh, the patient have hypogammaglobinemia. And, and the recurrent, recurrent, chest recurrent chest infection can even happen without hypogammaglobinemia, okay? without the hypogammaglobin. But anyway, we can put it also in our list of differential. This is not a list of differential. This is a cause of the bronchiectasis in this patient, as a risk factor, you may. So this patient, we can say, because of the tuberculosis, because of the recurrent chest infection in the childhood, because of the HIV, uh, and maybe the reason behind the recurrent chest infection was hypogammaglobinemia. Uh, these are the risk factor for having bronchiectasis, okay? But the differential, we have already discussed them the infection, the acute infection, the TB, the malignancy, and we mentioned also BCB as uh, one of the differential for the case. Please, Dr. Alaa, uh, can we put uh, aspergilloma, one of the differential in this case, and also cause sarcoma? Uh, it can be, it can be. Both of them can cause hemoptysis, but uh, again, uh, the history is going very, very, very strongly with the bronchiectasis, okay? You can mention aspergilloma, it's okay. But it's very difficult to, 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 to diagnose aspergilloma from the history alone. Uh, the patient with the, you mentioned the Kabusi um, sarcoma. Kabusi sarcoma, the patient should have a constitutional symptoms and this patient doesn't have any constitutional symptoms. So just to put myself in the, in the safe place, I'm going to tell the uh, examiner it's a malignancy. So to repeat our thought, to repeat all the point that has been raised by all of you, uh, if the examiner asks me what is the etiology behind the bronchiectasis in this patient, I'm going to mention all the three factors that I found it during the history. Number one, the recurrent chest infection, and we say the recurrent chest infection, it could be because of hypogammaglobinemia, although no investigation was done at that time. Uh, number two, it could be because of the TB. Number three, it could be because of the HIV, okay? If the examiner asks me what the differential diagnosis for bronchiectasis, what is the differential for the bronchiectasis, it could be just an acute infection, it could be just uh, a cancer, it could be BCB, it could be uh, uh, COVD. Okay? Just remember, uh, remem remember that uh, the most common cause of bronchiectasis is the post infection. Any patient who had an infection, he can, uh, this just, just infection can be complicated by bronchiectasis. This is the most common cause of bronchiectasis. Don't jump into cystic fibrosis, ciliary dyskinesia, yellow nail syndrome, Cartigner syndrome. Remember that the most common cause of bronchiectasis is just complication following a chest infection, okay? Whether it was TB, whether it was simple pneumonia, those are the most common cause of bronchiectasis in the clinical practice, okay? But if the patient give you from the history a very strong uh, suggestive point uh, related to the cystic fibrosis or hypogammaglobinemia, you can mention them to the, to the examiner. Okay. Um, Dr. Uh, thank you so much for, for the things, all the things and the approach. Uh, you said about CD4, so you said the CD4 is low in this patient. How we should know in the history that this patient is from no, the no, compliance no. with the medication or just to... No, it is, it is unlikely in the exam to give you the CD4 count. This is something that I'm telling you, I'm telling you later on when you do your all investigation, you are going to find that the CD4 count is low, which is going with the BCD. But in the, in the exam, I can't know if, the, if his CD4 count is low or not. I'm do we have low. to do it? 
you do have to do it in this patient like uh, have- yeah yeah I'm, i was going to discuss the investigation we didn't reach to the point of investigation yet but any patient with hiv any patient with hiv there are two tests that you have to do it for them just once he step his uh, his food inside your clinic you have to check for two things the cd4 count and the viral load okay for every patient with hiv it's similar to the hemoglobin a1c in the patient with the diabetes if there is a test that i can uh, i can use to monitor the patient with an hiv status i have to check for cd4 count and the viral load in this patient, I'm going to ask him, is he complaining to the treatment? Is he regularly following his, uh, his condition with any clinic or with, H- with the HIV clinic? Those are, are the question. If he, if he did any blood test uh, to monitor his condition, just a quick question to know if, he, uh, if, he, if he's uh, taking treatment or not, or if his condition is controlled or not. Okay? If you want to ask about CD4 count specifically, you can ask about it, but I don't think the time will be enough for you to go deep and dig deep into the HIV. You can ask the general question. After that, if you have a time, ask about the CD4 count specifically, if you want. Uh, good, good evening, doctor. Should we ask about, uh, is there any other bleeding, asp, uh, bleeding from the lupus? Yeah, in, in, the, in the patient with hemoptysis, uh, I'm going to I'm going to explain for you the differential for hemoptysis and how we approach the hemoptysis. But uh, this is a station five, okay? Uh, I believe if you got the diagnosis and uh, it was some something like bronchiectasis, I believe you have to go in the history very quick. There is no time to ask about all the symptoms. It could be a pulmonary embolism. Should I ask about all the risk factors from thrombophilia? There is no time. There is no time to ask about frothing urine, mouse sore, sore in private region, uh, chronic diarrhea, and snoring at the night. The question which we have discussed before that can uh, correlate to underlining uh, risk factor for thromboembolism. Because this patient, his main symptoms was just the cough contain of blood. If it was pulmonary embolism, for example, the patient has a chest pain and shortness of breath. I have to ask about the symptoms uh, related to thrombophilia, okay? Uh, But this case was clear case of bronchiectasis, chronic cough for two months uh, with or without shortness of breath. Two months is a chronic, it's a a long period. In addition to that, in the past medical history, you find very strong points suggestive of bronchiectasis. I have to dig more in the bronchiectasis. There is no time to, I I got the diagnosis. The diagnosis is very clear for me. Why should I start? Why should I keep looking for other causes? Why should I keep ruling out other causes? While the diagnosis for me is very clear, I have to know the etiology behind the bronchitis. I have to take a time to examine this patient rather than looking for the other cause of uh, of hemoptysis. There is no time. This I am talking about the station five. What is the best way to uh, or uh, the best approach to get used uh, or to get the best out of your time? Uh, if you if you if you went to ask about the other symptoms of to other causes of bronchitis or hemoptysis, I think the time will not be enough for you to examine this patient. And we are going to explain all the all the causes of bron- of, of hemoptysis. If you spend your time looking for the causes only, you are going to miss the whole case. Okay. So for me, if this was my case, I'm not going to uh, keep digging behind the cause. I have already got the uh, cause of the hemoptysis, I have to uh, to follow it. I have to uh, to uh, to know what exactly caused it, and I have to examine the patient and explain to the patient my plan of management, address all his concern, and finish and finish the the station. Sir, okay. uh, in, uh, in fact, the case is very lengthy. I started examination at uh, five minutes. Okay, so by the, the way, exam, it but, is very difficult. By the way, Doctor Tenzil, bronchiectasis at station five appeared in Ajman in the last date. Hmm. Okay. Okay, okay. It was uh, a similar to this case, just the patient has one risk factor. He had recurrent chest uh, infection uh, during his childhood. This is what right. the only, this was the only, uh, this is what the only uh, risk factor for the bronchiectasis. And he didn't present with a cough at the exam. He, he mainly presented with a shortness of breath. 
but uh, bronchiectasis per se appears at station five. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay. Uh, sir. Remember, I, I mentioned that before, I'm going to repeat it again. Sometimes in certain centers, they can bring for you a case from station three, from station one. You may get a case of bronchiectasis at station five, and it, is hap and it happened uh, in Ajman in the last day. You may get a case of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. It's a case of station one, abdomin it's abdominal examination case, and it appeared many times over many, over many centers in, in more than one uh, basis exam. This is spontaneous bacterial protonitis, a case of station one. It can appear at station five. Uh, you may get a case of neurology at station five. You may get a case of peripheral neuropathy, diabetic peripheral neuropathy at station five. You may get a case of cardio, aortic stenosis, for example, at station five. I appeared in yeah. UK before. So, so but, I also got, uh, I also got aortic regards in session five. Yeah, that you see, <laughs> uh, this is one of your one of your colleagues also get a case of cardio at station five. So uh, don't always assume that your case in station five it will be one of the cases of uh, case related to the endocrine or hematology or dermatology or uh, rheumatology. Okay, you may get a case just from uh, a chest a chest case, uh, abdomen examination case. Uh, cardiology case at station five. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, since we discussed the history, I think we discussed the history, we discussed the examination finding, we discussed the concern, we discussed the, uh, the concern, and we could discuss the differential. Let's go into the investigation. Investigation, uh, I'm going to do for this patient all the general investigation, the CBC, ESR, C-reactive protein. And uh, remember that because this patient has a cuff which is productive, you have to do for him sputum. Sputum for MCNS, microscopy, culture, and sensitivity. This is very important for any patient who has a productive cuff. Uh, and I have to do for this patient a chest X-ray. I have to do for him a CT, a pulmonary function test before I jump into the CT scan. Uh, chest X-ray usually in the patient with uh, bronchiectasis, uh, you may find that uh, the patient with uh, with a chest X-ray, the patient with sorry, the patient with uh, bronchiectasis, uh, they may have a dilated and thickened airway. Uh, Sometimes the chest X-ray will not be enough for you to diagnose the bronchiectasis because the finding itself. It is not a specific finding for, for bronchiectasis. You may find sometimes irregular peripheral obesities. Uh, CT scan, you will find that this patient has, again, dilated and thickened airway. Uh, you may find the signet ring sign, which is a ring with uh, dilated arteriole surrounding it, or bronchial, uh, sorry, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a ring of uh, Dilated, bron dilated bronchioles, and there is an artery around it or arteriole around it. It can show, it can, it can, at the end, it will show you uh, the appearance of it will be similar to the, similar to the ring, okay? Dilated bronchus surrounded by uh, a nodule of pulmonary artery or branch from the pulmonary artery. It will, uh, it will appear as a ring in the CT scan. Uh, and another investigation will be on the, uh, will be depending on the cause. Those are the investigations specific to the bronchiectasis. I'm going to do the CBC, ESR, C-reactive protein, renal function test as a baseline investigation. I'm going to do the sputum for culture, microscopy, culture, and sensitivity. I'm going to do the a chest X-ray. I'm going to do the pulmonary function test in, in, uh, in bronchiectasis. You are going to find an obstructive button uh, forced volume and uh, forced expiratory volume in the first second will be very low over the forced vital capacity. The, the end result will be all of obstructive button. It will be less than 70% in the final percentage. And uh, the final test is the CT scan. Those are the tests specific to the patient with bronchiectasis. Other tests depend on, the, depend on the case. For example, in this case, we have to check the viral load. We have to check the CD4 count. We have to check in the sputum, uh, we have to check the acid fast bacilli uh, for the, the patient because he had a history before of TB. I have to check for something we call a gene expert. 
Uh, this is a new test uh, or a nuclear amplification test. Uh, it can be done on the sputum. Uh, gene expert, Reva and BC sensitivity. This just remember gene expert, or you can tell the examiner sputum for nuclear amplification test for BCR. Just see a symbol at that if you don't want to, re to remember the name, if you don't want to recall the name. This is for tuberculosis and for the HIV. And because the patient has a recurrent childhood infection, I can check the serum immunoglobulin. Okay. Other tests, it depends again, as I told you, on the uh, predisposing factor. If you thought that this patient, if you think that this patient may have a cystic fibrosis, you have to go for the test of cystic fibrosis. If you think that this patient has allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, you have to check the, the test for allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis and so on. Okay. Uh, in the management, in the management, any patient with bronchiectasis, you have to mention four things before you jump into the treatment. Okay. Any patient with bronchiectasis, I have to mention four things to the to the examiner. Number one, which is the obvious obvious thing that I have to mention it for all the all the patient, any respiratory station or any chest station, you have to tell the examiner the patient should stop the smoking. This is number one. Number two, the vaccination, the pneumococcal vaccination and annual influenza vaccination. This is number two. Number three, which is the corner stone in the management of the, uh, in the management of bronchiectasis, I have to tell the examiner that the postural drainage or any other, uh, other way for for uh, for uh, for the airway clearance any technique for the airway clearance but mention for the examiner just for facilitation remember the postural drainage there are many ways to drainage your uh, your lung or to help you to get rid from the uh, from the from the sputum remember just the postural drainage and number four you have to tell the examiner the pulmonary rehabilitation program it's a program intended to improve the uh, exercise or the, to improve the, uh, uh, the exercise tolerance or the exercise endurance for the patient with uh, bronchiectasis and other patients with COPD, uh, improve their quality of life, reduce the pulmonary symptoms. This pulmonary rehabilitation program, the main component is the exercise uh, component of the pulmonary rehabilitation program. There are other components in, in this program, similar to the nutritional support, educational support, uh, but remember the uh, to mention for the examiner, the pulmonary rehabilitation program. Okay, so again, from the beginning, in the management, I have to tell the examiner to stop the smoking, the vaccination, the postural drainage, and the involvement in the pulmonary rehabilitation program. Okay? Then we are, okay, going, to, then we are going to the uh, specific treatment. I have to give the patient uh, an antibiotic, short course of antibiotic, okay, uh, for the patient with uh, bronchiectasis. Uh, short term antibiotic, there is nice guideline, they have a guideline for the which antibiotic to be chosen. We have the first choice oral antibiotic, either amoxicillin or doxycycline or clarithromycin, okay. Uh, after you start the empirical antibiotic, you have to see the result of your sputum. Uh, the sputum microscopy and sputum sensitivity uh, and you have then to switch your antibiotic based on the based on the sputum result or the culture result okay uh, the details of the uh, of the antibiotic uh, preference what is the first line what is the second line uh, i'm going to send it for you at the group you can uh, you can check them later on uh, I think the examiner is not going to ask you deeply or specifically about the antibiotic, but in, but in any way, you have to know them just even for your uh, for your own benefit and to put yourself in the safe side. Remember amoxicillin, doxycycline, and clarithromycin. This is at the, uh, at the first, first line oral antibiotic. If the patient cannot take oral antibiotic or severely ill, we are going to give him intravenous antibiotic either coamoxiclav or piperacillin, antazobectam, or levofloxacin, okay? Again, I'm going to send for you the guideline later on in the group. Then, after the short-term antibiotic, we can give the patient long-term antibiotic, 
uh, usually we give the patient long-term antibiotic if he has three exacerbation or more per the year, we have to give him long-term antibiotic. We can give him nebulized antibiotic also uh, as a long-term uh, option. And again, there is a nice guideline for the, uh, the long-term antibiotic. I'm going to share it with you in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the WhatsApp group. Then after that, uh, if, the patient, uh, if the patient has uh, productive cough and this cough not responding to the postural drain, we can give him mucolytic. We can give the patient bronchodilator if he has shortness of breath. And uh, we can, if the patient has any respiratory failure, we can put him in non-invasive ventilation. And the last thing is the surgery, surgery indicated for the patient with uh, massive hemoptysis, the patient with recurrent symptoms that is life, uh, affect his quality of life and it is refractory to the medical treatment, we have to do for them either lung resection or the final and the last resort of treatment is the lung transplantation surgery. Okay, so again, I'm going just to uh, repeat them. Short term course of it, stop the smoking, number one, vaccination, botulinum drainage, pulmonary rehabilitation program, short-term antibiotic course, long-term antibiotic course, mucolytic, bronchodilator, and final thing is uh, the surgery for the patient who have uncontrolled uh, symptoms refractory to the medical treatment. Okay, this is bronchiectasis. Bronchiectasis can appear in station, uh, it can appear in station three, and it can appear in station, station five. It's very common in station three, very common. And uh, uh, striking thing during the examination is the coarse crackle, very clear crackles. You will find it uh, localized crackles. Uh, and those crackles, they are not, uh, they are not uh, uh, get, uh, get uh, sorry, they get, quite, they get a little bit quieter once the patient cough. Uh, this is the, striking finding in the in the examination in addition to the in addition to the clubbing even sometime you may find that this patient has a vesicular breathing he doesn't have any bronchial breathing okay even the percussion you may not find it that he has a dull uh, percussion you may find that it's just a res area of resonant note Okay, and plus or minus the wheeze, which sometimes can be present or associated with the crackles. Okay, any question in this case? So, Dr. Ala, you mean if um, inspiratory, expiratory crackles plus wheeze could be part uh, of Plus or minus the... wheeze, yeah, plus or minus sure, sure. wheeze. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but however, we have to have recall course of crackles to say uh, yeah. to be confident. Yeah. Uh, and it is very clear during the inspiration. Although the crackles, you may, you may hear the crackles all along the uh, respiration, during the inspiration, during the expiration, but it gets very clear during the, during the midway between the inspiration and expiration, you will notice the crackles very clear. Okay? And I think this sure. is the, from the examination, this is the only thing that can help you to say this patient has bronchiectasis. If you miss bronchiectasis on the examination, you can only diagnose it by the X-ray and CT scan. And I don't think those, uh, at the basis, they want to test your clinical examination finding. I think they will bring for you a case who have a clear crackles. If you miss them, you will, you will miss the case. Because there is no other way to diagnose bronchiectasis. Clubbing is not a specific thing for, uh, for bronchiectasis. So even the productive cough, the hemoptysis, all those things are not specific for bronchiectasis. But the coarse crackles, in addition to the, uh, to the clubbing, you will put your ferrous differential is bronchiectasis. Thank you, okay. Doctor. Okay, any question in this case? Before I mention for you the differential for the, for the hemoptysis, what are the important cause of bronchiectasis basis wise?
Okay. Uh, the, the differential for bronchiectasis, we have a monomic. We call it CIAPP or blood pressure of CIA agent. Whatever you think, uh, whatever, whatever sentence you feel like it's going to help you to recall the monomic, it is CIAPP. Okay, let me share it with you in the screen. Unfortunately, today there is no image. But just to okay, CIAPP. Okay, this is the monomic that cover all the important causes of the of the hemoptysis at the exam. Okay, the C for the cancer. Okay. The C4 for the cancer. The I4 infection, either tuberculosis, uh, aspergilloma, uh, sometimes necrotizing pneumonia. But remember, please, tuberculosis because it's the commonest cause of the, the commonest infectious cause of the hemoptysis. Okay? The A is for two things. Number one, autoimmune disorder, connective tissue disorder, like uh, good bachelor syndrome, Wigner granulomatosis. And the second A is for anticoagulant. Okay. There are other autoimmune disorders in addition to the Wigner granulomatosis and good bachelor, like, uh, for example, uh, Pasha disease, idiopathic pulmonary hemosiderosis. But at the basis, we will not uh, think about them because they are even Wigner at station three, it's not common. But just put it in your mind that uh, some some autoimmune disease can lead to can lead to hemoptysis. Okay, so the cancer, the infection, the autoimmune, the anticoagulant. This is very important if the patient is taking anticoagulant for a long time, and he, especially if he's taking warfarin, he's not following in the, uh, with his doctor. He's not following his INR regularly. He recently start taking uh, any new medication, especially antibiotic. Uh, think about the Think about the anticoagulant as a cause of uh, as a cause of the hemoptysis. Then the P, the P from book, uh, the B from book, either bronchiectasis or sometimes exacerbation of bronchitis, acute exacerbation of uh, bronchitis. It in the COPD patient, sometimes they may have uh, a blood. Uh, within their sputum, okay? So the B4, mainly for bronchiectasis or bronchitis, although it is not common like bronchiectasis, okay? Also the bleeding disorder, bleeding disorder like uh, thrombocytopenia, uh, Van Welbrand uh, disease, patients with DIC, all of them, they may have uh, also a hemoptysis. The final B, uh, it is not common at the, uh, sorry, the final B is uh, pulmonary vascular disorder. Pulmonary vascular disorder, any disorder within the pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, or pulmonary venous capillary, it can lead to uh, hemoptysis. There are many disorders that can affect any one of them uh, and eventually will lead to hemoptysis. Remember, the most important one is, basis wise, is the pulmonary embolism. But other important causes, like, uh, for example, pulmonary arteriovenous malformation in the patient with hereditary hemorrhagic transdictasia, for example, a patient with elevated pulmonary capillary venous bridger, uh, patient with mitral stenosis, they may, uh, patient with mitral stenosis, they will have, uh, if the mitral stenosis was not controlled and uh, progressed, uh, it can lead to elevation in the pulmonary venous bridger which eventually can lead to hemoptysis. And I saw a patient with mitral stenosis, they have hemoptysis, okay? Uh, pulmonary embolism and pulmonary arteriovenous malformation. Uh, just overall, remember the pulmonary vascular disorder. Pulmonary vascular disorder. Pulmonary embolism, number one, a problem within the pulmonary vein or a problem within the pulmonary uh, capillary the, uh, the pulmonary capillary or within the uh, uh, 
any malformation within the artery and the vein. And sometimes a problem within the artery itself, pulmonary artery or even the bronchial artery, the patient, if he had an aneurysm, and this aneurysm ruptured at any time, he may have a hemoptysis. Okay? If you just want to ignore all that, remember the pulmonary embolism. Okay? Basis wise, remember the first, the, 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 the final P, the P from the pencil, it is uh, for the pulmonary embolism. Again, I'm going to repeat them CIAPP or CIA blood pressure of CIA agent, uh, the C for a cancer, the I for infection, the A for autoimmune, the second A for anticoagulant, the B for bleeding disorder or bronchiectasis or bronchitis, and the final B for pulmonary embolism. This is, uh, I think, the simplest way to, uh, to re uh, recall or memorize the cause of the, of the hemoptysis. If we want to discuss the cuff, and I don't think uh, today is a suitable day to discuss the cuff, but remember that uh, if the patient main presenting symptoms was a dry cuff, dry cuff, not a cuff with a sputum and contain a blood, uh, which is hemoptysis. No, if the patient has a dry cuff, uh, the differential and, the, and, and, and the dry cuff was the main presenting symptoms. The dry cuff was the main presenting symptoms. It was not the associated symptoms, like the patient did not present with a shortness of breath or chest pain in addition to the in addition to the cuff. No, the patient has mainly cuff, plus or minus the other things. The causes of dry cuff, we call it beige is or beige is the B, the B for post nasal drip. Uh, post nasal drip like patient with allergic rhinitis, patient with uh, acute sinusitis, patient with acute pharyngitis, the secretion within their nasopharyngeal uh, area, it may get, uh, it may drain back into their lung and can cause, it can cause cough. And this is, by the way, the most common cause of the cough. Uh, it is not common in the patients, but remember the B for post nasal drip, the A for asthma and ACE inhibitor, the G for gastroesophageal reflex, the E for extrinsic allergic alveolitis, and uh, the I for interstitial lung disease, and the S for sarcoidosis. It's called beige is or B P A G E, then is I S, beige is. Just one important thing before we finish our session. Remember, please, please remember that if a patient present to you with a cough, they are important question you have to ask. Uh, you have to ask them to the uh, you have to ask them to the to the to the patient or to the surrogate one of those questions if i want you at the end of this session to remember one thing only one thing any patient present with a cough please 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 don't forget to ask him about pits in his home okay you can i i know at the exam you are not going to forget the smoking you are not going to forget alcohol you are not going to forget the blood or within the, uh, if he had a sputum, if there was a blood within the sputum, but there is a one important question. Most of us, even me, used to forget it, which is if he has pits at home, uh, this is the only way to diagnose extrinsic allergic alveolitis or hypersensitivity pneumonitis. It's a very important question, and it's a question that will help you to get 20 from 20 at the uh, history station, or 28 from 28 at the station five, from it will uh, it will save you from failing at that station. Okay, remember any patient with a cough, I have to ask the patient if he has pits at home. Okay, or okay, at home. Okay. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Please, can you repeat uh, the differential for dry cough? Differential for dry cough, it's called beige, beige, uh, white paper, beige, okay? The P4, post nasal drip, it is not common at the basis, but it's the most common cause of the cough, dry cough, uh, 
in the clinical wise, okay? It's, a, it's a post nasal drip patient. We have allergic rhinitis, acute sinusitis, acute pharyngitis, and he may have a dry cough, okay? The A for asthma, the, also it for AC inhibitor if the patient recently started taking AC inhibitor. Uh, the G for gastroesophageal reflux. Remember asthma and gastroesophageal reflux, both of them can cause nocturnal cough. The E for extrinsic allergic alveolitis. The extrinsic allergic alveolitis, we put it as a separate cause of dry cough, although extrinsic allergic alveolitis, it's one of the causes of interstitial lung disease, but we put it separately because it's very common at the basis. We want uh, extrinsic allergic alveolitis to be in the mind of the, all the candidate so they will not forget it if they got a cough case at the exam. The I for, this is beige. Beige is, okay? The I for interstitial lung disease. Any cause, any lung, any uh, condition that lead to interstitial lung disease can cause a dry cough. Uh, patient with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, patient with uh, connective tissue disease like systemic scleroids, rheumatoid arthritis, dermatomyositis, patient who is taking drugs such as nitrofurantoin, patient with occupational lung disease like pneumoconiosis, uh, asbestosis, brigulosis, all those, uh, all those condition, all the interstitial lung disease, lung diseases can lead to dry cough. Uh, but, and, and by the way, hypersensitivity pneumonitis or extrinsic allergic alveolitis, it's a part of interstitial lung disease, but we separate it from the interstitial lung disease because it's very common at the, at the basis. The final one uh, is the sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis, S. Beige is the S for sarcoidosis. Again, sarcoidosis, it's one of the causes of interstitial lung disease, but we uh, mention it separately because it's very common at the, at the basis. And I think we discussed sarcoidosis before in one of our previous sessions. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. One of your colleagues here said that I got a case of best nasal drip in my station two in my previous exam. That is very interesting. No, no, Dr. Aldis has appeared uh, two years ago or three years ago, I, rem I remember. It has appeared also, post mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Very nice. Yeah. Very interesting. Because it's a very, it's the most important cause of the dry cough. Uh, most of the people uh, who are going to the paces, they put in their mind the, uh, the rarest cause or the less commonly cause of the, uh, of, the, of the cough, and they forget the most important cause of the dry cough. By the way, the differential with which we have mentioned them, uh, those are the, when the dry cough is the main presenting symptoms, okay? The main presenting symptoms. Although sometimes interstitial lung disease present with a shortness of breath are the main presenting symptoms, but our differential here was focused on uh, the patient who has a cough as a main presenting symptoms. Okay, it is not exclusive to the, all the causes of the dry cough. Okay. Okay, if there is no question, we are going to stop here. Uh, thank you everyone for listening to me. Uh, thank, thank you, you very much, sir. You are thank welcome. you very much. You are welcome, Dr. Tanzil. Thank you everyone. And again, this session is going to be uploaded into the YouTube channel. Thank you everyone and see you or uh, inshallah in this, we will have a soon uh, another session soon enough. Or in the near Thank future. You, Dr. Rada. Thank you very much. You are welcome. You are welcome. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night.